Um, what have you used to clean the inside of the, the head there? What, what little... For inside, what we did was, it was a mixture of wire brushes to clean inside the ports and... Your patent little jig. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it may make me a millionaire one day. Just a piece of gas pipe, gas hose, that you can find on any propane or butane bottle. Cut it off at a, at a length that suits you, depending on how far in you need to get. Slice two holes. Mount that to your drill bit. For cleaning the ports and also for cleaning the bore where the injector sits. Insert it into the bore. Ah. In you go. <laughs> Just got to get that tank on now before I talk the head down. So checking whether this cylinder is on top dead centre, which is where underneath the uh, cylinder head, the piston crown is sat in the bore. And if the head's sat there, and you've got that gap, TDC is where the piston would come right to the top. So TDC is actually top dead top centre. Top dead centre, yeah. Right, that and explains it. And then you've got it. BDC, which is before dead centre, but that's for your timing. So you've got before, so you can retard or advance okay. your timing. But for this, for uh, setting the valves, you need top dead centre. Okay, now, you are now going to set the valves? I will do in a second when I've got TDC. So that's dropping. You're using the wire. Just yeah. a piece of wire down the bore for the injector. Sit it on top. So that's actually touching the top that's, of the piston. Yeah, that's touching the, the piston crown. Um, and then it's just a case of, with a screwdriver, moving the flywheel back up along. So that little wire. piece of wire then is just... It's my gauge to see when it's on TDC. Okay, keep going, keep going. I, I'm actually inches away from it, so I can actually see it moving. And what there, happen, I can see it going up. Yeah. Yeah. The wire up. will stop travelling. Up. And that's when we know. Up. We've reached uh, TDC. Up. Right, I think that's just stopped now. Up, it's still going up. Still going up, and it's going up again. Still going up. Right, we're not far off TDC now. Up. 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 Really close to TDC now. Still up. So you go down and then you wind it back. Yeah. There's movement on there. Yeah. So there's no pressure on those. Inlet and exhaust, which is the. Boo -boo -boo -boo. Viewed from the rear, uh, 2G, it's 2J this one, so there's that one, so this end one is your inlet valve, which is currently on the way up, and as the manual says, 0.3mm on the feeler gauges. So you back your locking nut off, and you slide your gauge in. How should it be? Should we, you should be able to pull it out. Yeah, just light resistance. Did you polish the um, contact points underneath? Uh, no, just cleaned them. 
So there's no grit there that's going no, to grit? No, no, it's all... No grunge? No, it's all cleaned and been oiled before. So that's where you the What's the adjuster in between the two rockers? There? No. There? Yes. That is the oil feed. So when the engine's running... Oh, that's not an adjuster. It looks like it is from Yeah, here. it's got... Um, you can basically undo that. Right. And blow out the oil feed for the rockers. It works on the... Um, pressure on the crank casing so it's a feed off the camshaft right that feeds oil up and it pulses so it's just little jets uh -huh, gotcha onto their own it'll run into bearings so i think now that that is set so what we shall do now if you've got tdc on one side yeah what is it on the other TDC on one would be all the way Bottom. down on the other, yeah, so it would be... So you still have to wind the other one all the way up to get TDC again? Yeah, yeah, I would have to work. But you can't set it on bottom? No. It has to be on TDC? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now really what you should do is, the manual says to adjust the locking nuts and use... Hi. And use the uh, decompression handles to as, a, as a point. So when it's at its highest point, you basically mark on the flywheel TDC, mm. and then you you wind it again. I think it's half a turn or a quarter of a turn. You put another mark on the flywheel for after dead centre, and you go back all the way back, and you mark uh, BDC. So you you can kind of gauge where the uh, flywheel is. You just tighten them up. Blir det fiskevärd i morgon tror du? Ja. Excellent. Ja, vi ska luta och pröva för något intressant. Vi är nästan ut av kvete. Right. You start it tomorrow? Uh, hopefully in a bit today. Ah. Fingers crossed anyway. Ah. Uh, you know what? A lot of work. Nearly all done now though. Oh. Been worth it. Oh. Right, so the inlets can be set both together. Mm -hmm. And then you do both exhaust valves together. So at the moment, you're at a point where the push valves are as far down as they're going to go. Okay. For the inlets and the exhaust. Let's uh, turn this. And let's see what happens. By the way, that tube there. Have you discovered what happens if you drop it? Oh, it's got water in it. It's a. Uh, it's a seacock. It's a. Uh, it wheezes. It does. TDC on there. Right, we're at, right, here we are. Did I just go past it? Yeah. Bloody hell. Right, you've got your injectors. You've got your feed pipe here that comes from the injector pump. Which that, is down the side there. Which yep, is down the it. side there. That pulls diesel from the filter, which pulls from the tank. Right. So your diesel comes through, up and into the injector. Right. It's under pressure, so it opens the uh, lifts a needle inside to atomize the We've fuel. We've already seen the needle. Yeah. Any unburnt fuel is sent back through this pipe, which is called a leak-off pipe, and that's fed back into the um, filter. Ah, uh, no, actually we have a separate can there, which should be a can hanging down, which takes all the shit. Yeah, this one, the leak-off goes into the filter. Oh, right. So it's refiltered. And then fed back through to the pump. The injectors then. So your injectors are just 
they're not screwed into the bore. So they're loose? They're loose in the bore. The, the fitment of them isn't mega tight. But it, it's a it's cl it's a close fit, but they will slide in and out quite easily, and, and they've been cleaned. That's what that strange clamp is for. Yeah, the clamp with the two bolts stops the injector from popping out. Right. And it compresses the injector. So the copper washer is in the bottom of the bore, and you feed the injector into the bore, and the the um, nose of the injector sort of goes through the washer and then seats itself onto the copper. You then put the clamps on which compresses the the, the, the seat, the, 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 uh, the collar of the injector, the flat face onto the copper. Right. It compresses the copper which forms a, a, a gas tight fit. Right. And the two clamp, the, the clamps literally stop it from flying out the top. Um, when we took them out, it was leaking past the washers and there was a lot of carbon build up and crap between the injector body and the bore um, and it took some time to get the injectors out because it was so badly seized in. And what um, did you use? It was literally a case of just spraying with uh, penetrating fluid. WD-40 or yeah, something? WD, yeah, WD, just something like that. Yeah. Leaving it to soak in and soak in and soak in uh, and then using a big adjustable, big adjustable spanner Across the two flat face, the, the two flat faces, having the head in a clamp. We saw that, yeah. And then just moving it back and forward to break the seal, and, and then, then taking all the components out and cleaning them up and putting yeah, them back. Yeah, you, you can use. You can buy a slide hammer, which fits on top of the injector on on where this union's attached to. The slide hammer screws onto it, and they're about that long, with a steel collar. With, with, with some weight in it and literally it's just a case of constantly up and as you hit the top it lifts it just a little it lifts it a little bit and interesting what would it be called can you come a bit more specific it's name just a slide hammer slide hammer yeah, that's yeah. it brilliant it, it, thank you very much slide hammer or it'll be listed as an injector removal tool but it's a slide hammer fantastic tensioning the clamps how do you do that is it just a question of as far as they'll go or do you feel it or what um Talk? Is there a torque measurement there, for this? There is a torque setting on it. Right. I think it's around about 14, 14 pounds, which is not an awful not lot. Not an awful lot, no. No. What's the head? Uh, the head top was torqued to. 28? No, it was it was a massive amount. You're joking? No, it was. I think it was about 114. Joking? Pounds. Really? Uh, and they're done in sequence. So you go in a cross section, crosswise. So you'll do this corner, that corner, this corner, that corner, and you'll 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 tighten them hand tight. Take each one a couple of turns until you've got tension on it and you can't turn it with a ratchet anymore. And then you'll get your torque wrench, which is a bit longer. Right. In any manual for any engine. You'll have set... Just a minute, I can really zoom in on this, I can pick this up. Got it! You'll have set torque parameters. So the cylinder head bolts for the 2J engine, which is this one, 115 foot-pounds. And what you basically... I'm going to have to zoom back so yeah. do it slow. Right. So what you... You basically... 70 newtons. Right. You would... On here, you've got zero to ten, and each increment you would take as one pound. Right. So there's seventy with a little line going down, and when you reach zero, should stop right bang smack on that line. So that would be seventy. Okay. So you would look at that, and you would say, right, that's where it needs to be, and then you would look at these numbers. These little increments, right? And you would count round. So if it was 73, you would go one, two, three. That's now at 73. Brilliant. And then you'd lock it off with this. Uh, hang on, just a minute, just a minute. You lock it off with that. Yeah, you tighten that. What does that mean? That means that you can't. That move handle it then. won't move now. So Brilliant. It's okay. On at the top okay. Got lead. it. You put your socket on the end. Right back here now. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Once it's on the bolt and you start to tighten it, what you'll hear 
is a click when it's at the right torque setting. Really? So you'll hear it and you'll feel it, you'll feel the handle click. Right. And that's when you know it's torqued up. Um, but yeah, you should always follow, especially for the head, head slope, bolts. Slope, yeah, go on. Follow whatever is in the manual. Right. They're set at that for a reason. Um, and the other important thing with a torque wrench is when you finish using it, is take off all the tension. Otherwise, the springs will compress and yeah, it will change. Yeah, and you'll soon need need it calibrating. So you just loosen it off, tighten that, ready for storage again. Good, good. Okay, it might might be an idea actually to check this one against the other one, the one I got at home. Yeah, brass one. And uh, do you know uh, the brass one's probably quite accurate? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's brilliant, Barry.